2019, almost a year ago to the day, and we now welcome in longtime friend of Kobe, T Mac. I appreciate you joining us from your home in Houston, Texas, and uh, just hearing Kobe's voice like that, razzing you back and forth the way you guys always did. Uh, what's going through your mind? I'm, d I'm devastated. Like, just like everybody else. I mean, I think I'm the one person that has a connection that nobody else has with Kobe. And I used to stay at his house with Pam, Joe, Shea, Shrip, and, you know, I just remember us just, the, the minute I walked through those doors, like it was just an instant bond and, you know, the, the stories that I could tell, um, being in there, him watching karate flicks and watching <laughs> Michael Jordan home, home videos, and he would watch a certain part pause and rewind, rewind the tape. And I was just, I was like, you know, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, that was just him. He was, he was practicing on some of the things that, that Michael was doing. He was emulating that. And th this sounds crazy, but Kobe spoke this. He spoke this. He used to say all the time, I want to die young. And really? I thought he was, cra he used to say, I want to die young. I want to be immortalized and, you know, I want to have my career be better than Michael Jordan and I want to die young. And I just thought he was just so crazy for saying that. And when I got the news yesterday, I had a dance with my daughter yesterday at my wife's event and they came and told me the news and I just couldn't believe it. Just like, just like everybody else, but it's, I'm devastated. I can't even imagine in those pictures into young teenage Kobe that, as you said, you have because he felt you were his contemporary and it was someone he could let in in a way that he really couldn't let anyone else in those years. And yes, hearing you say, oh, I want to die young, I want to be a legend, that's totally in line with young Kobe. But older Kobe, the Kobe that you and I spent the last year watching, the 40, 41-year-old Kobe, he wanted to be around, especially for his family. Can you tell me a little bit a bit about just the way you guys have reconnected recently? And I mentioned earlier in the show, these AAU tournaments, it's not only texting and calling and, and the joking around, but then you would be at these tournaments together and you'd be the dad's club, right? Yeah, and, and clearly that statement was pre, you yeah. know, way before kids. Yes. And I'm sure, you know, once he had kids, he didn't have that mindset. <laughs> um, you know, we, we go through our careers. It, let me just back up. Maybe my, my first two, three season, I probably wouldn't have made it through those seasons if it wasn't for Kobe. Because he came in a year before me, same footsteps, straight out of high school. And, you know, he, he went through some turbulent times in his rookie season and same with myself. I used to call and lean on him for advice all the time. And he would give me that advice because we were brothers. And I went on, played for the Magic. He was playing for the Lakers and, and playing for championships. And me over here, I'm, co I'm competing, trying to win scoring titles because I'm not competing for championships. <laughs> and our relationship kind of got lost because of his mindset and what he was trying to accomplish and I was over here and we go and play you know our careers and here we are we have kids and we're re reunited you know with through AU basketball because of our kids we're coaching our kids and you know that connection uh, just reconnecting with him and bringing back those old memories going out to uh, watch his kids practice you know, and having <sighs> playing these games, playing these games and him watching my kids play was like the greatest, the greatest thing. And I'll sit there and watch Gigi and before the game, I'll go up and I'll give Gigi a hug and tell her, you know, to go out there and kill. And she was like, don't worry about that, Uncle Mac, I got this. <laughs> Oh. And she was special, man. She was special. She was built like Kobe. Her mannerism, everything. I mean, 
just to watch her play it was like watching a young Kobe. The mood, she had a fadeaway <laughs> at 13 years old. <laughs> I'm watching this girl and it, it just looks like her dad out there. I'm like, damn, she's going to be special. And she's not going to get that opportunity. He's not going to get that chance for her to carry on that legacy. And I was out the last tournament. I sat and I, I talked, for, talked to Vanessa and the other three girls for like 20 minutes watching Gigi play. And, and, my heart just goes out to Vanessa and those girls and Pam and Joe, Shea and Sharia. I mean, it's, this, is a, it was, this is hard, man. This is hard. And that's the thing, right, that we feel so much because Kobe was a basketball player and a public person, but he was a father and a husband and a brother. And Trace, I got to tell you, I rest a little bit easier knowing that you, your wife Clorinda, are gonna be there to help take care of Vanessa going forward because she is going to need it. I can't even imagine. Mac, thank you oh, so much gosh. for yeah. being with us. We appreciate you. I will see you soon. And we all feel it. And, and the way you described your friend, you did such a 